Hey, hi, hello, my friends. It's Christy with Bori on Junk Journals. Today is actually not Wednesday. It's Thursday. I'm running behind. I apologize. I promise next next Wednesday we'll be back on track. But um, anyway, I am here to do the on the case challenge video with you. Um, again, sorry it's a day late, but there's a lot to talk about today. Um, all right, so once again, and as always, every week, you, my friends, are invited to solve a murder. We are looking into, we are still looking into the case of who killed Mrs. Worthington, um, and this week is week nine, Christopher and Layla Worthington. Okay, lots to talk about. Um, first, we had some DNA testing going on. Now, our DNA testing was done first on uh, Lavender Archambault, and uh, we tested to see if she had any relation to uh, Mrs. Worthington, our victim, and it turns out that Lavender is not related to Mrs. Worthington, so she is definitely not the missing twin girl. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, you know, good to know, right? So Lavender is definitely not Layla Worthington. Um, so the next DNA test that we did was on Marnie Worthington. Now remember that Marnie Worthington is Philip Worthington's wife, uh, daughter-in-law to our victim, um, and mother to Pearl Worthington, the little girl who is currently sick and in the hospital. Um, and Marnie Worthington is the missing twin. Okay. So we know that Philip Worthington is Charles Warner's son. Um, we now know that Marnie Worthington is also Charles Warner's child with Mrs. Worthington. These two are 100% biological siblings and they are married and have a child. This is very disturbing. Um, so we did a DNA test just to check Pearl's parentage. And Pearl's parentage has been confirmed. Her parents are Philip Worthington and Marnie Worthington. And maybe this explains a little bit why she was born with a heart defect, because she is a child of incest between um, close siblings. Um, there were also some police interviews conducted. So the first uh, police investigation for the week was with Marnie. Um, and they said, you know, um, they asked her um, about her relationship with Mrs. Worthington. And she said she didn't like her, uh, that she was too controlling and arrogant. And they never got along well. Um, they asked her... Uh, if she had any knowledge that Mrs. Worthington was her biological mother and that she and Philip were siblings. And she said, absolutely not. Um, she said that that was, that the, this, this revelation was destroying her entire life and she had no idea about any of it. Um, the detective asked her if she believed Mrs. Worthington was aware of it. And Marnie said she had no idea. Um, the detective asked her if she had any knowledge about Mrs. Worthington's affair with Paul Holmes. And she said, no, she did not know about that either. Uh, the detective asked her if she knew about the existence of the twins. And Marnie said, no, she didn't know anything at all about the twins. The detective asked her if she had any information regarding Mrs. Worthington's will. And Marnie again said, no, she did not know anything about it. The detective asked if she could provide any insight into why Mrs. Worthington would have left everything to Pearl. And Marnie said, well, you know, Pearl's her granddaughter and she was born with a serious heart condition. 
Uh, she said she supposed Mrs. Worthington wanted to ensure her well-being, but now knowing that Pearl is a child of incest, um, you know, that, that perhaps that had played into it. Um, the detective asked her, can you account for your whereabouts at the time of Mrs. Worthington's murder? And Marnie said she was alone on the beach. Um, the detective asked her if she killed her mother. And Marnie said no and said, you know, that's not my mother. Don't talk. Don't don't call her that. Um, the detective said uh, or asked her if she had any information about who might have wanted Mrs. Worthington dead. And Marnie said, you know, there could be a lot of people, but she doesn't know of anyone in, of anyone specific. Um, the detective asked if she was aware that Sebastian Worthington was unable to father children. Marnie said no. The detective asked if she was aware that Charles Warner was Philip's father and hers as well, and she said no. Um, the detective asked her if she could explain why Pearl was playing alone in the attic just before she became ill. And Marnie said that Pearl often plays in the attic, uh, that it was set up as a playroom for her, and Letitia keeps it clean, makes sure that there's toys and things to entertain her. She says it's a safe place for her to play. Um, the detective asked her if she knew about the existence of a will that left Mrs. Worthington's entire... Oh, we already talked about that. Um, the detective asked her... Well, he asked her if she was aware of the will that left everything to Pearl, and she said no, she didn't know about it. Um, however, we've already kind of speculated on why he would have left it, or why uh, she left it to her. Um... The detective asked her if she had any involvement in poisoning her daughter, and Marnie said absolutely not. She would never hurt her daughter. Um, the detective asked, or oh, that was it. Okay, so then that was the end of the interview with Marnie. Um, so then the police investigated, or I'm sorry, um, then the police interrogated uh, Jackson Shaw, the private investigator, or interviewed Jackson Shaw, the investigate the the private investigator that uh, Mrs. Worthington had hired to locate her twins, and they asked him um, when he was approached by Mrs. Worthington to take on the job, uh, and he said it was the end of November, 2022. They asked when the contract was signed, and he said December 3rd, 2022. They asked if he had successfully located the twins, and he said yes, that the boy was relatively easy to find. He knew his identity within uh, within the second day of being on the case. Um, the girl, Layla, was a little more difficult to find. Um, Uh, the detective asked how Mrs. Worthington reacted when she learned that Nash Holmes was actually Christopher, um, and uh, the private investigator said she was furious, but he suspected that she had already known. She just wanted it confirmed. And the detective said, do you have any idea how she might have known? Um, and Jackson Shaw, the private investigator, said that he believed Paul or Anne may have shared that information with her. Um, the detective asked, when did you locate Layla? And Jackson said that he found Layla about a month before Mrs. Willing, Mrs. Worthington was killed. Um, the detective asked where he found her. Uh, he said that he found her, you know, um, in the home, that it was, it was Marnie Worthington. Um, the detective asked how Mrs. Worthington responded to that news. Uh, Jackson Shaw said she was deeply upset, crying, blaming herself for everything. The detective asked if he had any knowledge of Mrs. Worthington's will, and he said no. Uh, the detective asked if he was aware that Sebastian Worthington is unable to father children. Here we run into more lies. 
uh, Jackson Shaw tells us that um, that information that Sebastian Worthington saying that he's unable to father children is incorrect, that Mrs. Worthington had actually confided in him that there is a child that Sebastian fathered with Letitia Flores, a 10-year-old boy named Maxwell. Um, he tells us that Maxwell is currently living with Letitia's aunt in Paris. Um, the detective asked him if Mr. Worthington was aware that he is the child's father, and Jackson Shaw says yes, they apparently underwent DNA tests to confirm the paternity. Um, so the detective asked if he knew if Albert Worthington was aware of the child and his paternity. And Jackson Shaw said Mrs. Worthington uh, had mentioned that Albert did not know, but he has no concrete in information about whether or not uh, Albert knows. Um, the detective asked, once you found the twins, was your employment with Mrs. Worthington concluded? And Jackson said yes. Uh, the detective asked if he had any insight into who might have wanted Mrs. Worthington dead. Um, Jackson Shaw said, uh, you know, could be, you know, with that kind of wealth and, and a family with those kind of complex dynamics, it could be anyone, um, anyone within the family circle. Um, okay, then the police uh, interviewed Nash Holmes. The detective asked him to, re to describe his relationship with Mrs. Worthington. He said he didn't like her because she was trying to keep him and Greta apart. Uh, said now he guessed he understood why. Um, the detective said, so you had no idea that she was actually your mother? And he said no, uh, that he didn't even know he was adopted. Um, uh, they asked if he had known that he had been named in her will at one time. He said no. The detective asked if he was aware that Mrs. Worthington had had an affair with Paul. Um, Nash said yes. He had overheard his parents arguing about it. The detective asked if he had known about the twins. Nash said yes, but he never suspected he could be one of them. Uh, the detective asked for his birthday. He said he had always believed it was September 4th, 1998. The detective asked if he knew that Marnie was his twin sister. Uh, Nash said no. In fact, he'd only met her one time. Um, the detective asked where he was when Mrs. Worthington was killed, and Nash said he was at a retreat with Greta. The detective asked if anyone could confirm that, and he said, well, Greta could, as well as approximately 15 other couples and the hosts of the retreat. Um, okay, and so that was it for the interview with Nash. Give me just a minute to get a drink. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. My when I am doing these videos, um, I start to lose my voice, and so I have to have a drink, and usually a peppermint helps. <laughs> anyway, so here we are. More lies, and more lies, and more lies, and now we know who the twins are. But now there's this other child, Maxwell, um, and does Albert know? Uh, because we kind of get the impression Albert and and Letitia are in love. Um, and Mr. Worthington totally took advantage of her um, when she was just a teenager. So here we are. Um, okay. The police investigators get a phone call from Dr. Hayes, who you remember is the emergency pediatrician treating Pearl Worthington, and he tells them that Pearl has recovered. So Pearl is better. She's still in the hospital. She's still getting treatment, but she is awake 
and she is recovering. Lavender has disappeared. This is where we're leaving it, guys. Um, the detectives on the case are Brianna Jenkins, Jennifer Rowe, Sharon Oha, Karen Mill, Kim Riggs, Erica Mears, Brittany Linger, Honey Price, Kathy Orlando from Dreamcraft Journals, Kathy Sauerbrauer, Melanie Tash, The Passionate Sticker Hall, and Sassy Turtle Pants. All right, guys, it is time to fill your casebook. Fill your casebook up, make some art, have some fun, and become the greatest junk journal detectives in the world. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.